Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Sinister. Uh, Team RG, top of the night. We are in the driver's seat. All right, y'all. So I just actually just shut down. This is um, part two to my trip planning video. Um, earlier, y'all seen that I put out my first part of the trip plan. So I'm going to go over um, everything that I've done so far today. For a lot of y'all drivers that want to know how to trip plan, how to run your trips out here, this this video is what I'm showing y'all how to how to do it, how to be successful out here running your trips. So as y'all know, if you got your notebook, get your notebook out. Um, get a pencil, get a get a calculator, and I'm gonna give you the numbers. Okay. So. The total trip from Minnesota to Hamburg, PA, was on my Ram McNally, gave me 1,136 total miles. Write that down. Because that was from the shipper all the way to PA. So when I calculated it in the video earlier today, remember I, had, I was at the shipper. The ship from the shipper, because I was sitting up at the yard, was like 34 miles. So I had to drive to the shipper. But we talking about going from the shipper to the delivery. So from the shipper to the delivery, it was 1,136 miles. Now, um, remember I told you got to deliver the load by Saturday. So today is November 16th, which is a Thursday. So you got Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You got three days of running you can do on 11, on 11.36 on those miles. So on 1,136 miles, you got three days. Now, here's how lazy drivers do it. You say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, divide that. You take those three days and you do 1,136 miles divided by three. Because there's three days you got. Now, your answer should be 378 miles that you need to drive each day. Because if you take 378 miles times three, is going to give you 1,136 miles. That's how you break your trips down. Yes, I count the day I'm in. Because you still got driving time that day you pick the load up. So the quicker you can get loaded. And the quicker you can get moving. The more miles you put down in the beginning of the trip. The better it is for you in the back on the back end of the trip. So, now. Remember, each day I have to drive 378 miles to get there Saturday, right? Now, for those that don't know, you can do more than 378 miles a day. You could do 400 miles. You could do 450 miles. You could do 500 miles. So, on that note, how many miles did I do today? Today's like I said, today's the first day I got the load, which is Thursday. I still got Friday and Saturday. So I just did, I just actually shut down. I just did 491 miles. Now, write this. 100, uh, not 100, uh, 1,136 miles take away 491 miles should leave you 645 miles for Friday driving. So when I wake up in the morning to drive for Friday, um, to drive for Friday, I got 645 miles tomorrow to drive. Now, Here's how lazy guys is going. Lazy drivers will do it. Okay, we got 645 miles remaining on this trip to deliver it. 
And it has to be there Saturday. So I'm already done with Thursday. So now we got Friday and Saturday. Right? So you take 645 miles divided by 2. Gives you 322 miles. 322 miles point five. That I don't really tell you the point five, but it's going to be 322 miles. Now, lazy drivers is only going to drive 322 miles and shut down early. Runners, we're going to try to do 500. If if depending on how everything flow tomorrow, I can roughly do 600 miles and wake up Saturday morning and just do the 45. So, what you want to do is, while you out here, you got to learn how to keep this door closed. Get your fuel, get your snacks, get your drink. When you driving down the interstate, do not get off the interstate to go to a truck stop to go to the bathroom. Pull off in the rest area. Because you know why? You could pull in, whoop, pop the brake, get out, run in there, do your number one or do your number two. Or do number one and two, whatever you got to do. Just do what you got to do. Get back in your truck and you're right back on the interstate. Now, if you get off at an exit, you got to slow down for the off-ramp. Now, when you get to the off-ramp, let's just say you heavy. Your load is heavy. You get to the top of the off-ramp, there might be a light there. There might be a stop sign there. There might be a yield sign there. Now, let's say you get up there, you got traffic coming over the overpass. And the light is red. You know, now... When you start to accelerate to make your left turn, let's say you're on a slight hill. Since you heavy, it's going to take a minute to build up that speed. Now, excuse me, y'all. Now, when you drive over that overpass and you come down, now you got to come into the truck stop. Now, the fuel, let's say the fuel outlet is full. There ain't no pull all the way through to the line and then run into the bathroom. Because drivers do it. Now you got to find somewhere to park. So now, let's say you find a parking spot. Now you got to set your, now you got to set up your 45. You got to back in, pull forward, back in, pop the brakes, change your on-duty status, turn the key, turn the truck off, take your key, walk to the building, Go in there, find the bathroom. Either you're going to do a number one or you're going to do a number two. Then you're done. You wash your hands. Hope you wash your hands. Um, you come out. You might want to grab snacks. You might want to get something to drink. You might want to pick up a bag of chips. Then you get online. There might be few drivers ahead of you. It might be just two cashiers working. It might be... Three cashiers working, somebody doing the scale, somebody helping somebody with a, a EFS check, and you got somebody getting fooled or something. Now, you got to walk back to your truck, get in your truck, put your, you know, put the key in, crank it up. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm just, I'm tired. Um, and leave out the truck stop. You know, you might get to the exit. There might be two-way traffic, so you're waiting for you to have clearance. Then you go back up the street. Then you got to go back over the overpass. Then you got to make that left to get on the interstate. By the time you do all that, you almost did a 30-minute break. But if you go to the rest area, all you got to do is slow down off the interstate, pull in there, pull right in. Pop the brake, change your duty status, go in there, come right back out, back in the truck, back on the interstate. That's it. That's simple. That's simple. So for all of y'all that want to know how to run out here and be successful out here running, trip plan. You know, look at, like, on here, it's telling me, in the bottom corner right here, right, you see it? says 1119 now how many hours do we got to drive a day we got 11 hours of drive time so I'm 100 uh, I'm 11 hours and 19 minutes out tomorrow I can get up 
do my pre-trip that's 15 minutes gone off my 14 which is well my eight hour clock because the 14 starts also um Drive my first eight hour clock out. Well, it'll be 7.45 on the eight hour clock because 15 minutes go to your pre-trip. Or however long you take to do your pre-trip. Let me get that in there because I know somebody gonna comment like, yo, you do your pre-trip, you, re you record it as you do it. You know, DOT requires require you to have a 15 minute pre-trip. 15 minutes for a pre-trip, 15 minutes for fuel, 15 minutes uh, loading and unloading. So, um, some companies require you to do post-trips, some companies don't. So, um, that's, that, that's optional depending on who you drive for. So, um, Now, I drive that first seven hours and 45 minutes, run that down. I still got time coming back. So, I'm already in Indiana. Now, I'm going to be on Interstate 80. So, it's flat. Speed limit could be 65, 70. So... I can I can actually probably be in PA tomorrow for Friday because I do it right. I time it out right. That 645 miles that's remaining, I can well, I can run it all the way there. I can actually run all the way to Carlisle, PA. And remember what I said that I still got to write my fuel stops for tomorrow. Here's another thing for a lot of y'all to know about trip planning. Should I go in here and write my, my, my fuel stops like I did earlier today when I was saying that I had to get fuel? Remember I said I was going to get fuel from right here, Hudson, uh, Wisconsin, and run all the way to Toledo, Ohio, down here. I was going to get fuel in Hudson, Wisconsin, which was $2.57, top it off, and then get to Toledo, the TA in Toledo, Ohio, for two fifty seven. dollars You see all of this? Prices is too high. I, I, I fuel hustle. I fuel hustle. I'll get fuel to take me from one fuel stop to another fuel stop where it's cheaper. Now, I still got... After Ohio, I still got to pull up the remaining of my truck stops because my discount is for TAs and Petros. So, I tap travel centers. You know what? Let me go back. My route, quick stops, TAs and Petros. Okay. Now, I'm 195 miles away from Toledo tomorrow. Breezewood and PA, which is I-70, I-76, and the PA Turnpike is 478 miles. So tomorrow, I got to find out how much that fuel is going to be. Now, I can go to Breezewood and get fuel, or I can go to the Petro in Carlisle, PA, on I-76, up there in, in Pennsylvania, or I can go to the T8 in Harrisburg on I-81 and get fuel from there. So I still got the Breezewood TA, Carlisle, the Petro and Carlisle, and the Harrisburg TA. So now tomorrow I'm going to write those truck stops down here. Look at my email to see how much fuel is tomorrow for Toledo. Because see... The fuel in Toledo today was 257, but tomorrow it can be 260. It could be 250. You don't you don't know until you get your um your your fuel uh email that when the company you leasing for send you an email about your your discount. So 
Um, that's how that works. So I'll get that like I'll get that email maybe about three in the morning, four in the morning, automatic every day. You get that email. So um, basically, that's my trip planner. So for a lot of y'all out here that's doing trip planning, you're new in this industry. It takes a lot of time. It takes time to learn how to run real hard, like how I'm running. And then look, another thing I forgot to mention real quick before I end this video is. I still had an hour and 17 minutes remaining on my 14 hour clock. So I would still be able to drive, period. You know what I mean? I would still be able to drive. So I did 491 miles, I had an hour and 17 minutes. Now, I could have drove for another 40, 40 miles, 50 miles, and then shut down. So, but um, I'm gonna end this video, guys. Be sure to thumbs up the video, subscribe, please subscribe, please thumbs up the video, please make sure you hit the notification bell. If you got any questions about trip planning, um, I know somebody was asking me about trip planning, let me see if I can find his name, I, I'll give him a shout out on the next one because this video is already kind of long, um, but there was somebody that asked me about um, can I do a video on, on trip planning because he wanted to know um i'm trying to find i'm trying to find your name so i can shout you out um should have got it earlier so man i, I definitely appreciate a lot of the comments man a lot of y'all been leaving a lot of good comments Positive comments, man. Thank you. For real, I really appreciate that. The comments is what keeps me going, keeps me motivated, and it helps me keep y'all going. I don't, I don't see it. But um, leave your comments and stuff like that, and I'll holler at y'all tomorrow. Maybe I might do another video behind this. But I holla at y'all tomorrow. It's your boy Sinister Man. Thank you for watching this video. I know it's kind of long, but I know a lot of y'all wanted to know this trip planning thing. I'm going to start trying to shorten the videos up um, and not make it so long because I know it's draining on the eyes and stuff like that. So uh, I holla at y'all tomorrow. Peace out.